Have you seen side effects, like people getting side effects anecdotally? Yeah, so, uh, and uh, one of the issues with SARMs is since they're not regulated, people will fill them with things that aren't SARMs. And uh, and people are, yeah, like you said, they're willing to do whatever, especially men, to take, especially because that's becoming, like, so popular now. And now you look at guys like, like Chris Bumstead, I always refer to him because everyone seems to know Chris Bumstead now. Yeah. And, like, people see that and they're like, oh, I want to attain that, so I'm going to do whatever it takes. And, like, maybe they don't, you know, they can't go to their nutrition store and get steroids, so they're going to go to the nutrition store and they're going to get SARMs. Mm-hmm. Because that's what they can buy over the counter. Uh, once, when you pull those, do you feel different? Jack, what's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Dude, I'm good, man. This has been this is three peat. Yep, yep. Third time here, and it's every single time we talk, it seems like we we go on a on a nice little tangent, but we get a lot of good stuff going. For on, people so. who haven't seen the first two, or even just haven't seen um, the last one, I mean, I would say I would definitely recommend if you want context. Cause we're gonna go in today so it's like mm-hmm. if you want the context if you want to learn about what you do uh in depth bodybuilding in depth um we'll go into it a little bit today but just for the context the last two episodes i'll have them linked in the show notes below as well um so you can people can dive in there yeah this is um this is gonna be fun man this is gonna be this is gonna be a lot of fun so before we do we have a small portion of people that don't know what you do so mm-hmm. and it's changed a little bit probably since we last spoke so give them the gist of what you do and then we're gonna go into this most recent show and then we're just going to let the conversation come yeah so um my hobby is competitive bodybuilding and this is uh my third mpc show that i've done and outside of bodybuilding i work in pharmaceuticals um i have my background bachelor's in neuroscience and my master's in drug development so i have a little bit of that background of terms of the supplementation that goes into bodybuilding um and i also do coaching so i have a couple clients and um i feel like my background within nutrition within biology has equip me well Mm -hmm. especially competing to be a good coach for a lot of these athletes um and it's definitely a business i'm trying to grow but yeah competitive bodybuilder coach and uh work in pharmaceuticals dude i think it's so funny you say that it's like a hobby because it's definitely so much more than i mean there's hobbies where people build birdhouses you know what i'm saying yeah yeah not like actually taking it to the next level yeah it's more than a hobby for sure because it's it's a life i think it is Mm -hmm. a lifestyle but the reason why we refer to it as a hobby is because you can't really make a career out of it unless like you're you know you're devoting your life getting sponsorships mm-hmm. producing content especially now um that's really how like you look at chris bump said he doesn't you know make his money winning shows he makes money putting out supp- supplements clothing line like that's that's the and revenue B, for people um on the youtube get up look up uh chris bumstead get that up for them yeah. so they can see who and, this um, guy is more and more people within the fitness industry i think are, are looking at him and he's a classic physique competitor at the mm-hmm. olympia level so the highest level of bodybuilding but that's why i think you know it's not it's a lifestyle but it's also a hobby because mm-hmm. you can't really make a career out of it unless that's really everything you're doing putting all your money and time and energy into it um, and usually you have to be at the top of the top to really be making a lot of money. From so it. we're going to talk about career. We're going to talk about the future. Um, mm-hmm. But I want to get to what we've been waiting years to think to talk about. But also, this is the right time to talk about it. Yep. You just had this recent show. Set us up with the show. What was it? Where was it? What was the deal? Um, what place did you take? Because yep. I want you to say. <clears throat> yeah, so I got my first time getting first place at the Steve Stone Metropolitan Classic, which was in Teaneck, New Jersey. Um, and I competed in the light heavyweight division. So that's 177 pounds through 197 pounds. I weighed, weighed in at 186. Um, so yeah, I got the first time getting first place in a bodybuilding show, third time competing in MPC. So that felt really good. Yeah. Um, and it was a 16-week prep. You know, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that goes into it: cardio, diet, dive in supplementation, dive into all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it finally felt good to get that first actual first place because I've gotten second place in recent shows. I've gotten second callouts, which is like tenth through fifteenth place at the national level. So it felt good to finally get that kind of reassurance to myself that I'm doing something right. If yep. that if that makes sense. So yeah, it, your work is paying off. Exactly. For sure. So so where it's probably doesn't correlate to this first show. There's a time in a, whether you're a hobbyist, bodybuilder, Mm -hmm. whatever you're doing, where you go, okay, I want to go to the next level. It's just Mm -hmm. like cycling. Yep. Where everybody, you have to do, you have to do enhance your performance. You have to take drugs. There's no, I don't see another way. You know, it's obvious from Mm -hmm. Lance. It was like, yeah, it was Lance and fucking all the other guys. It's just, he lied about it harder than everybody else. Right. So when does that happen for you? Like when, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe the time frame isn't important, but yeah. 
I figured the decision making no, around it. Must it be. is. Uh, I think with with gear with steroids, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, you're gonna take it to bring your, yourself to the level of competition that everyone is kind of at for bodybuilding. I mean, MPC is an untested federation, so pretty much everyone. And if you go to an MP show, MPC show and you look at the guys and you talk to guys backstage, everyone is on steroids. Every, every yeah, single person, yeah. and uh, you know, a lot of people are open about it. They'll talk about it, um, and I think the decision to do it kind of comes down to how serious do you want to take uh, the sport. Mm-hmm. But I also think that there's a certain level of um, acknowledgement around the the health and safety side of it, where you always want to be talking to a doctor. Um, and if you're using it for sports that are tested, that's really where you shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you know, high schoolers doing it for performance advantages, like that stuff is obviously not something we. Uh, personally as bodybuilders condone but you know everyone's trying to take their physique to the next level so yeah i mean i feel like you're not even condoning anybody no no (laughs) it's not like you advise people on what to do no and and they really like i always say you should wait as long as you can but if you're gonna be you know you want to compete you're probably gonna have to make that decision at some point they're all there are natural federations but they're a much Mm -hmm. smaller and a lot of them you can get by using steroids and just pass the test like the only thing that they're doing is doing a polygraph test or they're doing a urine sample so it's like a formality though yeah and like they'll urine test the winners but you can pass a steroid test if you say i was taking like dianabol for example um it's an oral it's an oral steroid and i'm taking it for 30 days in the shows and 40 days if i pull it at 30 days i will pass that piss test because the drug is out of my system in two or three days yeah so a lot of these guys they can take you know a bunch of different steroids do the natural show and it's like you're winning a natural show even though you're enhanced they're not really that accurate so why not just go to the mpc and like actually you know take the stuff that everyone's oh, so doing you're saying that there's guys who are winning quote unquote natural shows yep. but and and some of them are claiming natural because yep. they have to or because they want to yeah and they want so that dude how weird would that i know you can't do that but like how weird is it like i feel like you as a person like mm-hmm. me as a person i'd be like I'm literally just to see it. Like everybody knows the real. It's OJ, dude. Yeah. OJ yeah. fucking did it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's like, <laughs> and I've. It's like he's just out there. Just no. What are you talking about, man? And I've had natural. Like I've, I've, I have natural clients, and like I'll go to the show and I'll look at a guy and be like, yeah, there's no shot that that dude is an on juice. Like, you're like, saying that so he obvious. was your client and told you he was natural, or no? no oh, like um, a, a, I was somebody at the show against, against him. him. Yeah, and I was like, uh, there's a certain like there's certain things to a physique that you can't really achieve naturally okay this is fucking perfect yeah all right so how do you tell if somebody is on steroids okay so you're at the gym okay and you go to fucking one of these you know maybe something a little i was gonna say rinky dink planet they're not there those Mm -hmm. guys i've seen them there for some reason there's probably some there's a couple you just kind of question why they're there Mm. you go to an attilus in new jersey you go to fucking you name it anywhere you know your bodybuilding gyms how do you you see if somebody like are there telltale signs? I, I think so, and a biggest thing, ge- vascularity is a big component, but it does have certain genetics to it. Like some certain people are just way more vascular, but if you look at someone and they have like veins everywhere on their shoulders, on their chest, on their legs, like that is places where it's hard to have. Veins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's a big indicator because a lot of times what steroids are doing is they're increasing nitrogen retention. And nitrogen retention will increase your uh, vasodilation, so you're having more um, expansion of the blood vessels. So that's one of the telltale signs of steroid use. Another thing is like if they're getting lean very fast and not losing muscle, like you see a guy and he was fairly big, mm-hmm. maybe a little fat, and then all of a sudden, six weeks those later, those kids from high that you went to high school with, where you're like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, like, like how they get shredded. Like it's not like way. you. I've been following you for fucking seven years. Mm-hmm. These kids where you're like, oh, well, that's not even possible. Yeah, yeah, like a <laughs> quick transformation. Like, yeah. Because a lot of – with natural um, bodybuilding, you're having to take a lot of time because you're not having that enhanced effect of, like, muscle building over a period of time. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're in a deficit, your body is going to eat whatever it can to lose weight um, because you're in a deficit. Your body has to pull from something. And the way to not lose muscle when you're in a deficit – is steroids because it's going to tell the body, hey, we want to hold on to protein, we want to hold on to muscle mass, so we'll prioritize fat loss um, and carb absorption or carb using carbs instead of the, uh, so in a the sim- muscle. So in a simple way, that's what steroids is doing. It's kind of mm-hmm. telling it to to not consume 
your other your your protein essentially or your muscle mass because it's what's happening when you do take steroids is it's actually going into the cell altering the dna inside the cell to tell it we're actually reprogramming how these cells are functioning how the mm-hmm. metabolisms are working in these cells to prioritize that that carb uh the carbs and the fats over the or over the uh the protein so it's time man we gotta break it down so what are what did you you know how does it work they call it the stack yeah like how do you decide what to like not that you don't have to give anybody away but you know how do you figure out what that is for you and what what Mm -hmm. what was that for you so i there's when you're prioritizing your supplementation there's um for for a cut versus a bulk they're going to be certain supplements you're going to use versus others. Mm-hmm. So you're going to look at more dry agents when you're cutting versus wet or watery agents when you're bulking. So for this prep, I did 16 weeks. I started with just, we'll start with test. I did uh, 500 milligrams of test all the way from 16 weeks to two weeks. Okay. I did tren acetate and tren anenthate. So the difference between acetate and anenthate is acetate is a short ester. Anenthate is a long ester. Um, the reason why you, I switched from ACE to E is because you're, you want the drug in your system on show day. So mm-hmm. if I'm taking Trend ACE and I stop injecting two weeks out, it's going to be out of my system. If I take Trend E and mm-hmm. I stop injecting two weeks out, there's still going to be some left in my system on show day because you try to pull all your injectables at two-ish weeks out so you don't have any lumps or inflammation We're gonna in your We're going to keep legs. going, but so yep. once when you pull those, do you feel different? there's there's some mental effects like depending on the drug um trend specifically i notice the side effects of trend i don't recommend anyone taking trends no i, I want to just let everybody know like i'm don't not do a this. doctor yeah we're not a doctor no don't take any advice from this <laughs> consult your doctor we don't know what the fuck we're talking about and all of this is alleged all yeah, right continue. this is this is all just you know if <laughs> if i if i was competing this is now. all just conjecture um this is we're acting this is exactly. a, a script. Yep, yep. I don't know if anybody sees, but there's a ton of cameras. There's production. There's people. It's it's all just it's all, it's just, all just, just fake. It's like a movie, yep. dude. Yep. So with um the tre- like side effects wise, Trend has mm. some of the most side effects. With the dosage of Trend I run, I usually like 250 milligrams. Mm-hmm. Um, anything above that, my sleep starts to go to shit. Where I'm only sleeping like yep. two or three hours a night, and a lot of times it's very restless. So you get to sleep very fast. You'll sleep for like an hour. And then you'll wake up, and you'll be wake up, and you feel like you just drank a cup of coffee, and you're like laying in bed, like, should I? Uh, Dude, what do you do? You just kind of lay there, and like, I'll go take a piss, come back, lay in bed, and like, kind of sit there, go on my phone, try to go back to sleep, can't sleep because you have a job and shit, yeah, in real life, and uh, that's that's got to be the hardest. Sleep part. is so important on a prep, so that's why when I start to notice my sleep go to shit, I'll pull the dose back down. Mm-hmm. So anytime I've gone over two fifty, I've noticed that that's when I start getting the two or three hours of sleep and I'm like, all right, this mm-hmm. isn't sustainable. So you're saying the, the benefits of what you're taking, the, the benefits of the sleep outweigh the benefits, exactly. the possible benefits yeah, and of like, what you're taking. Um, <clears throat> even though you have supplementation, sleep is so important for fat loss. Um, also digestion and just, you know, metabolism. If you start to tank your sleep, your metabolism will start to go, go to shit. And uh, then one of the things we're trying to keep our metabolism as high as possible because if we're tanking your metabolism, then we're going to have to eat less food and do more cardio in order to lose weight mm-hmm. because that metabolism slowing down to try to fight us from losing weight. Um, and a lot of some of these drugs do is they increase metabolism. And that's more of the fat burners, which we'll, we'll get into. Mm. Um, but yeah, that the trend insomnia is a real thing and, and it sucks that, so you got to find like the dose that has pros and cons are kind of balanced mm-hmm. when the cons start to outweigh the pros, then you gotta, you gotta change something. So, um, so test trend, I ran master on. So trend, I only like running for about eight weeks. I ran it for the last eight weeks of prep. You don't want to run it for too long. It has some liver toxicity and the side effects we just went over. Um, master on, that's a drying agent. It's what drying agents do. Why they say that is because they compete against estrogen to lower estrogen, okay. and that in turn decreases water retention. So you're having a drier look. Um, to be like. 300 master on I ran for about 10 weeks and then I ran Primo which is one of the safest steroids you can run but it also is a drying agent Primo Ballin I ran that for 10 weeks and then that was kind of the the main steroids I ran 
for most the longevity of the prep, at least the injectables. And then we got into Winstrol, which was 50 milligrams for the last four weeks. Winstrol is an oral. You typically aren't gonna run that more than four weeks because of the liver toxicity. Um, some people run Anovar. I typically like Winstrol more. Mm -hmm. Seems to be more effective at holding muscle. Um, and then fat burners. So we'll get into some of the fat burners, which is where I think kind of have more of the negative side effects because they're, what they're doing is they're acting on your heart. So you have T3, which is thyroid hormone. Um, then you have clenbuterol, which is going to act on the heart to increase metabolism. And those are the two that I ran. Um, there's certain other ones like um, DHB and trying to think of some others, but typically I don't really like using a lot of fat burners and there's stuff you should throw in kind of near the end of a prep when you really need to get through those fat loss plateaus because your body will like fight you. Same thing with metabolism where yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm at 3000 calories and my body say that's a deficit for me. Mm -hmm. My body's going to fight me and drop my maintenance to 2800 because it's trying to slow down um, all the functioning of cells in my body to try to hold on to the weight because your body doesn't like cutting. It doesn't want to lose all this tissue because it's unhealthy. It's like a primal. Yeah, thing. it's an yeah. evolutionary mechanism is to, to decrease metabolism mm -hmm. in order to hold on to more of those calories that you're consuming. What T3 and um, clenbuterol do is they're increasing metabolism. So instead of being at 2800, it's now bumping up to 2900, 3000. So you can still eat and be able to mm -hmm. um, lose lose that fat. They should be incorporated when your deficit becomes so extreme that you're feeling like garbage you're very lethargic um and a lot of times what t3 is 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 thyroid hormone and what happens in the body when you're in a deficit is your body will actually stop producing t3 or t4 t4 is converted into t3 in the body so t3 is what really works on cells metabolically so your body in a in the deficit will actually stop producing t3 and what we're really doing is like supplementing it to keep metabolism high okay because that's so kind, kind of, of tricking it a little bit to keep doing that even yeah though you're shutting it down yeah and a lot of people kind of get uh scared of t3 because in if you look at well, some thyroid's tricky too yeah and a lot of women actually suffer from hypothyroidism My girlfriend has yeah it. like a lot of women so they're actually prescribed um level thyroxine which is t3 and t4 combined into one pill what are because yeah and she has sleep issues which i feel like she's gonna get blood work so i'm like just do that first but yeah she has had thyroid issues before and i'm like that could be causing like definitely a few that or and or both the tiredness during the day yeah. and then because i feel like your thyroid's like it, gotta be done because then and that has that correlates closely to your metabolism <clears throat> as well right because um thyroid acts on ev almost every single cell in the body mm -hmm. is what t3 will act on so Th that's why you know when you have low thyroid you actually get a lot of different effects from it like headaches like you said insomnia mm -hmm. um typically gaining weight because the body is just having that slower metabolism so that's why and if you're going to ever use steroids or gear mm -hmm. or fat burners you should always be talking to your doctor always be getting blood work because yeah there's you can you can look at what dose of t3 is actually giving you your normal natural levels of thyroid hormone so ideally what you would do is in an off season you're not on prep you're eating plenty of calories you'd go get your blood work done getting all your panels and look at what t3 your number is then you go into prep and say you start feeling lethargic we go get blood work again mm -hmm. we go and we see that t3 is low and t4 is low in, in our blood work now we know we can supplement it so we add that t3 and t4 and get blood work again oh our t3 now is back to where it was in the off season now we know we're we're at a healthy level yeah and we're not you know putting ourselves in a super physiological state of fat burning so you don't know unless you get i mean blood work anything you don't know unless you get blood work yeah for the most part and i always how else are you gonna tell and at least for bodybuilders you should always be getting blood work not even just thyroid but everything uh, like your lipids your uh, cbc which is your cell blood count all these things um can be indicators of your health and you should always be monitoring them throughout the process because they're the perfect indicators to know if something's going off. You're not always going to feel side effects too. Like so a lot of people have high cholesterol and they'll never know until they get blood work. So yeah, or they're just living there. Yeah, they're just like going through about their life and they don't yeah. know. And that's where a genetic component comes into it too. Is like certain people just have high cholesterol, so you should know. 
you know, when you're... You're saying all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that's why a lot of people are prescribed, um, like, um, certain anti, like, lower cholesterol agents. Mm -hmm. um, and because they're just genetically predisposed to it, but you should always get your blood work done and see if that if that's moving because someone might have high cholesterol but they'll be okay at like a hundred mm -hmm. and if they you know they keep moderating they're staying at 100 they're good but all of a sudden they go up to 150 yep okay now we got to make a diet change or we got to introduce medication to lower the cholesterol back down to normal because everyone is genetic like think about um eskimos for example they eat a lot of saturated meat um, they live up north where they need to have a lot of fat on them. If you tested their blood, they would have really high cholesterol. doesn't mean they're unhealthy. It's just that's what their body is used to. That's how they genetically have been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that's a microcosm example of the rest of basically all fitness yeah. and health itself, which is just the fact of that, yeah, like everybody is different and there's just no way mm -hmm. that you could like blanket almost anything. And that comes, well, I see that a lot with coaching is like, mm -hmm. I'll have clients who will come to me from past coaches Oh yeah. and just talking with people in the gym who have left coaches. It's like certain, certain guys will just give all their clients like cookie cutter plans and mm -hmm. like some, you know, there's females out there that may require like 2,800 calories and then there's females out there that might require 2,000 calories. Mm -hmm. Like not everyone is going to be the same. And your can approach use cookie plans. is graduated too. So that's the good thing about yeah. it. And like, I'll just paint a quick picture. Like. I did your workouts for 90 days. I basically went to you. I was like, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And you were like, okay, let's, we'll, that's good to know. Now I'll put something together. So then you put together the plan. I did it for whatever, maybe six weeks or something. Maybe mm -hmm. then we were halfway through. Maybe we talked. Um, and it wasn't, it was like, I want to do this, but my, it's a kind of further down the line goal. So you weren't like, no, we could do it faster. We could do it right now. Yeah. We could do it. It was like, oh, no, okay, actually, let's just – you were basically like, take these workouts, and then I we talked again, and you were like, no, nah, you should do it for longer. Yeah. You should do 90 yeah. days instead of – because I'm like, ah, I did 45. I'm good. Like, yeah. I did six weeks or whatever. Like, now I'm, I'm bored. So I want – even though I'm still getting sore and I'm still progressing, I knew I just – you were right. And I'm like, no, shit, I got to keep doing it. Now, like, dude, after those 90 days, like, completely changed my shit – it has to do with you, but it also has to do with coaching in general mm -hmm. because I've gotten coaching in my life now for like life and business and like, dude, it is a fucking game changer. Yeah. Like it is a game changer. So to do it for health and also the workouts, like you can't bitch out on yourself when you have a program. Like mm -hmm. when I'm, at least that's how I am. Like when I'm, when you give me the shit, I'm like, there's days where I'm like, Hey, listen, I can't do it today, whatever. But that might've been four days, five out yeah. of the 90. Mm hmm. Like, it's just, I I can't then come back to you after the 90 and be like, yeah, dude, I did it. Here's my stuff. Like, th then it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. So, you have to always be honest as a coach. Too. And if you're like, your own coach, you that's your fuck. Like, yeah. you're just going to cheat yourself. And like, most people. And with that, that's a good point is like, sir, and it's important to, if, you, if you're having trouble adhering to a plan, maybe it's not you, it's how the plan is designed. Yeah. And that's why, you know, say I... I had 90 days where I was supposed to be eating this diet. Yeah. Five days I broke on it. Tell your coach that, and they'll be like, okay, maybe we can design something else to, yeah. to optimize it's that this. communication. To, yeah, too. exactly. Like, I have I have one of my clients, and she she's really good. She'll, you know, she'll be like, all right, I'm getting old of beef. Can we switch things up? And like, yeah, that's perfect. We'll throw mm -hmm. in salmon. We'll throw in, you know, if you want a lean protein source with like a fat source, you know, we can do that. Like, there's just certain. You always have to be just transparent and honest with your coach if you're feeling a certain type of way. Because a good coach will work around you. Mm -hmm. You still have to try. Like, you still have to put in the effort. Totally. And a, a good, good coach, coach will, will call that out, too. Yeah, A good too. coach will figure it out. Yeah. They'll be... And they will you ask have to... you the right questions mm -hmm. to, to know what it is deep down. Yeah. And, like, you know what the thing is? Like, deep down also... Like, I looked at the workouts you gave me, and, like, the first time that I did the leg ones, I was like... In my mind, I'm like, I don't know. If, like, this might be too much, you know? Deep down inside, we know it's not too much. No, like, you can push yourself. Yeah, yeah like yeah. the other day, I was like, okay, it's like Sunday. Yesterday, I'm like, okay, I'll bike mm -hmm. for like mi a mile up a couple hills. Then I'll just walk. Like, I'll do like a hike. Then I'll bike home. Yeah. I biked, and then I'm like, I got there, I'm like, why don't I just run? Mm -hmm. So then I started running, and then, uh, you know, and then I biked home. And it was like, literally became like such a harder workout on paper. Yep. But it's like I think like I think it that contributed to my mindset now mm -hmm. where I'm I've done those leg days 
once I do a hike and then I do your leg day the next day and then I'm still alive, I'm like, yeah, yeah okay, let's we can push it. Like I actually got when I was running, you know that feeling when you were doing sports or whatever, maybe you get it from what you do, mm-hmm. when you're like overheating. Yeah, I, I, I know where you're just dripping that cardio, sweat. Yeah, and like you're, inter- internally. Yes, you're your, he- your body hot. feels hot. Yeah, yeah. Like not just warm, not just sweating warm, but hot. Yeah. I got there, dude, and I went, oh, fuck, dude, I missed that shit. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good. It's, it's, sca- it's, it's kind of scary, it's but it feels good. Scary yeah. Sometimes, but yeah, it feels fucking good. So like that's what I, I'm like, dude, like we can all do it. Like yeah. we can actually do it. Like you're the type of person where like you got into this and then you didn't do what all of us did which is like we got into bodybuilding then we got a little bigger then we did some cuts and some bulks and then we kind of just like ah life takes over lost it yeah yeah, yeah life yeah. takes over I, same thing with podcasting with anybody right like life takes over and they yeah. don't have a podcast anymore like but, I just do it for this you yeah know? But, and it is a hard like bodybuilding is not an easy lifestyle not, I mean dude I wouldn't say it's as hard as podcasting but yeah. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> we, we, we can comp- <laughs> we can uh, debate on that <laughs> But it's a, it's a lifestyle. You're you're devoting yeah. every that's what I was every saying in the meal. beginning. Exactly. And uh, it's like you know, like, like we're saying, sleep, training, diet, yep. your your recovery, like all these things you're having to do. Especially if you want to do it competitively, you're doing it for 16 weeks every single day. Is you yep. want to be on point, consistent, not cheating on your your training, not cheating on your diet. Um, no, it's it's not it's not for everyone. You're not a pussy if you can't do it. Like I always try to tell people that it's like if you can't. You know, you don't want to push it to this limit. You're not a pussy. It's just not. It's not for you. And like, yeah. there's everyone has their their thing that they love and the thing that they want to do. Um, and sometimes it's just not meant for for certain people with bodybuilding because it's intense. It's it's a lot of work. You want to push um, it on your thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like that's your bare minimum. Push mm-hmm. it on the thing that you're really good at. Yeah, like that's what I'm trying to do for like, dude. This this episode will be 130 weeks in a row. Yeah, that's and that's crazy. Podcast, it's, right? And that consistency is so important. That's all. But you love it too, dude. Exactly. And like, I don't love every part of it, but this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Like yeah. when I committed to podcasting, I didn't commit to podcasting a little bit. Mm-hmm, exactly. Like I, but I also didn't commit to bodybuilding. Yeah. Right. Exa- so it's yep. like I didn't. I chose my thing, and I stuck to my thing, and that's why I went to you and said like, Yeah, it would be cool. Like it's like, dude, I'm not gonna fucking compete. It's like you know, it's like at and this point in my yeah. life. It, uh, it's coming down to like I got another like ten years. I got like mm-hmm. a ten year window of like if I wanted to try it, yeah, I could yeah. totally try it between now and thirty five or whatever. Yeah. But it's like you got to go to yourself and go priorities, man. What are your mm-hmm. priorities? You know, yep. and like sacrifices. Lifestyle clients are so much easier than comp- competitor clients do. I'll be. It's honest. more fun too. Yeah, it's like they're you can just fuck around a little. You bit can too. try things. Yeah. You can be a little bit more, uh, a little less like you know detailed with everything whereas when you have a competitor client and a lot of times you know and i get it it's you want to provide the best experience and a lot of time as a as an athlete i get it you're going to get anxiety about the process you're going to you're going to question certain things but that's part of being a competitor is you're going to have and being a coach competitor is you're going to have to deal with you know not just providing the plan and providing you know diet workout but you're also got to be there mentally for the person like listen you're in your head right now like trust the process you know stick to the diet you're gonna get through it or you know today's hard but when you wake up tomorrow and you got this day done you're gonna feel so much better like you kind of have to be not a therapist but you got to be a little bit mentally there for them as well not just providing you know the physical things yeah you gotta be i think you should personally have negotiables and non-negotiables yeah. like you're non-negotiable i don't think you have to have all non-negotiables and everything mm-hmm. like i think like for me it's kind of negotiable we have to weight train like four times a week like i know just i have to do that to maintain at least or to like improve right yeah but then the other days it's like i don't have to lift every day like i can hike i can bike yeah. i can run like i can just do something else strenuous yeah i can even cut tree fucking cut logs whatever mm-hmm. like whatever it is but it's like that's I think people don't give themselves the out or they have or they just don't have the discipline to even do anything. A lot of people don't have like I'm down, like yeah. I have to do something. Like mm-hmm. I know I have to do something even if it's late. And there's times when I don't. It is what it is, right? But it's like I know that if I do, then I'll also do it next time. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that'll reinforce that. Back to you though. So, you know, we we went through everything that you uh that that you've taken, but yeah. you know, what, like how, how do you do you like how does it feel to like talk about it and like mm-hmm. actually be like you know open about like, it yeah because yeah. yeah. I know that you do with the people that you're close to and yeah. the people that you know or mm-hmm. like me with me or whatever but 
you know, do you, it's got to be, because it's your thing. So it's yeah. like, that's like as if I was podcasting, right? And I was like using this like fucking insane editing software, but I just never told anybody about it, mm-hmm. you know? And like all my editing guys are like, they would go crazy if I told them, ah, I'm not going to, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's kind of like, that's a fucking, there's no, there's literally no example that, that is the same as mm-hmm. this that I could come no, up it's, with. No, it's, it's, I like being transparent about it and I like the biology of it. Like there's a lot and we kind of got on the tangent of like how the certain specific drugs work and I could go into so much more detail about that but I like being transparent I like talking about the biology and I like um I think it's just part of the sport like if you you want to do like we we said you want to do well in bodybuilding you want to compete you're gonna have to take it and I think it's just part it's the same way as if I was telling you about dieting the same way I tell you about training like that supplementation is just another aspect of it and it's a really cool aspect because there's a lot a lot of science behind it and ways to optimize it one for health and one for performance um and i also think there's i like being open about it because it leads for discussion it leads for questions Mm -hmm. and if i can educate somebody about this type of stuff then i feel like i'm you know that's what gives me kind of uh like fulfillment if that makes sense like the educational aspect and you have an edge too because you have you have the understanding of the science behind it yeah yeah. because there's i don't think you anybody else in that stage knows more than you to be honest like in terms of the details the, yeah like what what is happening me- mechanistically when you're you're taking their this coach drug knows. yeah the coach pro- hopefully the coach knows yeah but you know more than them too probably but, but the client is getting a list and like okay I'm hey if it's take somebody this, this, who's dude if you're like fucking c-bums coach it's like they probably know more than you like yeah, yeah. they should you know what i'm saying but exactly it's kind of like you're saying it is part of the sport but it's also part of the sport and for people who don't know bodybuilding like it, you got to follow it just a little bit just to kind of know general sense what we're talking about. But mm-hmm. it's part of the sport, but it's also not really that understood at all. Yeah. As yeah. much as much of a large part of the sport it is, there's also motherfuckers with great genetics just winging it. Yeah. Yeah. And 100%. fucking killing it. And like there's a lot of in terms of studies, a lot of the studies for steroids are done on healthy individuals who are not bodybuilders, they're mm-hmm. not eating, you know, this amount of protein, this amount of carbs, whatever. So a lot of what you have to take is from these studies is one, a grain of salt, and also a lot of anecdotal evidence and then trying things for yourself and kind mm-hmm. of learning. Um, and I think there there is some good stuff within the studies that are out there. Mm-hmm. It just sucks that there's no money or investment into doing these studies on bodybuilders who are eating. Like one, one example is protein absorption. Um, that's one study that was done on natural people with um, natural people who are just regular, you know, regular individuals in society. They're not working out. So obviously the protein absorption of someone who's natural, hardly working out is going to be different than a bodybuilder eating, you know, two, two or three times the normal amount mm-hmm. of protein that people are eating. And that data just doesn't exist. So you have to take that anecdotally from people who have done it. Um, and I wish, you know, there was more science behind the the use in larger athletes bodybuilders sadly there isn't is there any legal easily attainable substances that if you want to like just get bigger and you're not going to compete like yeah. do you advise like other than just food right because yeah. that's the major like you can get massive on just mm-hmm. food right but like is there any other supplements that people can take whether it's creatine or something yeah. like that like and I know SARMs were a big thing, and I know SARMs. I've I heard think, of this, now, but I don't know what it is. Maybe you could. Yeah, so SARMs stand for selective androgen receptor molecules, um, and they're they're very very new within the last couple of years, um, and they're not regulated. But now that they're gaining more traction, and especially with younger populations, mm. the FDA starts to do a little so, bit more so, inspection on so them. So bodybuilding TikTok took this shit. Yeah, around with this shit. exactly. And it's like, oh, it's the fad cool thing to do is to take SARMs because they're new and like they make you get huge without being steroids. But one of the things I don't like about SARMs is there's just not a lot of research on them. Whereas if you look at steroids, at least from the safety and toxicity aspect, there's, you know, a lot of these drugs have come out since the 1960s so there's decades of evidence that have been done on them specifically for safety and toxicity because that's really what we care about most is you know efficacy could be we like to see efficacy and performance increase but safety and toxicity are the most important things in terms of when we're taking this what do we care about the most and with SARMs there really isn't that data compared to anabolic steroids Mm -hmm. um, which make them a lot more risky to take I think in my opinion and the fact that they're just 
Have you seen side effects, like people getting side effects anecdotally? Yeah, so, uh, and uh, one of the issues with SARMs is since they're not regulated, people will fill them with things that aren't SARMs. And uh, there's actually, I know there's been certain studies of looking at different SARM brands and seeing what's actually in them. And they've actually found that there's been steroids in the SARMs rather than being SARMs themselves. So you keep buying it because it's so good. But it'll give people the side effects of steroids, like high estrogen can lead to like gynecomastia, mm-hmm. acne. Um, you know, high estrogen side effects, water retention, and people will take the SARMs thinking that SARMs technically from the science shouldn't have any estrogen mm. effects, but because they're not actually SARMs, because they're not regulated, these kids get those side effects. And that sucks because, like, yeah. you're a 16 year old kid thinking, like, oh, I'm just going to take this to get big. All of a sudden, you have gynecomastia, which is like breast tissue. It's like where the, the nipple will actually form female breast tissue. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's like you're a 16 year old kid, you just wanted to get big. And this company, like and this, now you got, this nutrition store, stole it, sold it to you, dude. You and your girl got, are in a competition <laughs> now, dude. Exactly. You're like, babe, something's happening, bro. Yeah, and like a 16 year old can't make that decision. So I think, well, that's a fucking big issue in general. It's just like, t- I mean, it's everything, man. Yeah. I mean, listen, we can't, you can't say it's not worse for women. Yeah, yeah. Beauty standards, dude, are way worse. And now there's not, there's good ones or bad ones. I got opinions on it, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But it's definitely not good. like it for uh, like don't like the tr- reality is like they will have an ad for a guy and it's like kind of a normal guy mm-hmm. <laughs> and they'll have an ad for a chick and it's like a dime yeah, you know? yeah, it's yeah like, exactly like for sure there's there's marketing aspect. there's marketing aspects there but like almost the same similar it's just not as bad because just men and women are different and that's controversial cool mm-hmm. but the it, it is true that this is probably the the opposite the the equal opposite i guess for men which is like the f- beauty standards for girls when they're and listen i do i do charity work for the national eating disorder awareness foundation and stuff and i'm all about it like i love them i love helping people it it's bad there's a lot of contributing factors but i think that's like the guy version of it yeah. where it's like you just want to be bigger and you're just gonna fuck gonna your body up you just want to be smaller so you're just gonna as a as a female and you're just gonna not eat you're just yeah. gonna purge or whatever you know it's like that can happen to fucking and and a lot of men have eating disorders too a lot of bodybuilders have body dysmorphia and eating disorders definitely the big the big one yeah yeah so it affects both sides differently yeah and like and people are yeah like you said they're willing to do whatever especially men to take especially because that's becoming like so popular now i think fitness is becoming more popular than it's ever been mm. and now you look at guys like like Chris Bumps that I always refer to him because everyone seems to know Chris Bumps that now yeah. and like people see that and they're like oh I want to attain that so I'm going to do whatever it takes and like maybe they don't you know they can't go to their nutrition store and get steroids so they're going to go to the nutrition store and they're going to get SARMs mm-hmm. because that's what they can buy over the counter uh. um, but in terms of outside of because of, SARMs technically they're acting on the their selective androgen receptor molecule so they're acting on the androgen receptor mm-hmm. same thing with is what steroids are acting on the androgen receptor because that androgen receptor is what's stimulating protein synthesis which is going to increase muscle mass um but outside of steroids and sarms ways naturally to increase muscle mass creatine just upping your protein intake um creatine what is it? so does it so it ju- just to be very clear about creatine yeah it will physically make you it will like increase the size physical size like you're holding more water yeah that's why but like you you could measure it in centimeters or Mm -hmm. even in probably not in inches i would assume not that much but but it actually does make or does it just make it look bigger or does it actually increase the size you're increasing the size because muscle is made of water Mm -hmm. like glycogen is is the substance that makes up a muscle and when you are intaking creatine, you're going to hold more, that creatine is going to hold more water. Um, but there is a perform, so you will have more size to um, the muscle because it's holding more water. Yeah. But there is a performance advantage of creatine. I remember watching a video, a good way to put it is, cre- there's, a, there's a certain pathway that creatine uses with ATP. And what ATP is your, your mm-hmm. form of energy. So when you're doing weightlifting, mm-hmm. I'm doing a bench press and I'm doing a, 12 reps of say 135 when i'm getting to that 12 when i'm going through those reps i'm using creatine to burn atp throughout that process so if you're low on creatine you're going to actually run out of creatine during those reps 
and you won't be able to recover like those back end of the reps will get harder mm -hmm. so what creatine is doing is you're having an ample amount of it in your muscle so you're actually able to do those repetitions without burning through that creatine as fast so as it's if you had less. less side size sheer because everybody's what i'm yeah. why i ask is because that's all that anybody cares about yeah. is the size I don't. I now well, I used to, but now I'm more like, okay, how can I work out better? Mm -hmm. So if I were to do that, so it doesn't. So what fucks him with me with create? Why I actually didn't want to take it is that when I smoked weed, mm -hmm. it, it was fucking weird, dude. Really? Oh yeah. Really and it weird. shouldn't have an interaction technically. It was That's, every time. Really? Every time. Huh? I haven't tried it lately. What I would have to do is take it like real as early in the day mm -hmm. as possible, and then smoke as late as yeah. possible. Because I, I, I always like doing creatine just to keep consistency. I'd put it in my, like I do it in my pre-workouts. Um, I think there's a use for it if you're natural or if you're enhanced. It's just something you should have ample amounts of. Yeah, I was going to say. So like even to do a scoop or a five, yeah, five, five grams five of creatine grams. a day. Like, yeah, just not even just, just getting in. in five yeah, it's always going to. I think it will. Pre-workout probably. Yeah, and it will make a performance difference. And I, I can mean, feel it in the workout. If you're sure. taking like anabolic steroids and you're taking creatine, obviously the anabolic steroids are going to do more towards yeah. performance than the creatine, but there is going to be a benefit of, of it. And if anyone's interested, they can Google ATP and creatine energy pathway, mm -hmm. and it, it'll give a good breakdown on what's actually happening at the biological level. Um, where creatine is is being used as an energy source because um, there's multiple ways our body uses energy non there's uh, anaerobic which is through oxygen there's the creatine ATP pathway and I think ox I forget what the, the third pathway is but mm -hmm. that specific one is used when we're doing weightlifting which is yeah. why creatine is so important for weightlifters to take got it so that's smart just to take in general. yeah just to have ample yeah. amounts of it and if you're eating red meat you're probably getting like one or two grams per, like say I ate like you know five six ounce steak I'm getting like one or two grams of creatine from red meat mm -hmm. so you're probably getting a little bit of, of creatine but just five grams seems to be you know the optimal amount optimal okay um yeah, for people to, to take yeah and like there's it's as a nat natural athlete it's really like your supplements like protein creatine bcaa's mm -hmm. eaa's which is essential amino acids that's the stuff that's that's probably going to help you the most but it's just there's a huge difference of what's happening biologically when you're taking anabolics versus versus being natural yeah totally and and, and i difference. think like that's the thing. It's like, dude, if you're not a fucking competitor, what the fuck? Why are you? Are you yeah, what why are you taking you it? I mean, I get it, dude. It's just a TikToker. That's all. Like, I'm a TikToker, and that's what I do. And, and it's part of that's the mental body dysmorphia. Yeah, exactly. And that comes into it. And I would say, like, even my like every bodybuilder. I think if you're a good bodybuilder, you're gonna suffer from body dysmorphia. Like, I, I think remember, even if you're not, you probably yeah, are. <laughs> yeah. Like even during, it was the night before the the show, and I was in the hotel with. Uh, my uh, my girlfriend and I kept I was looking in the mirror and I was doing my posing and I was like, "Am I dry enough?" Like, and, she, and it's good to have someone there to kind of reassure you. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, you don't you don't need to worry. Like, you're dry enough, mm -hmm. and it's like you're con like the mirror is a bodybuilder's enemy. And I try to tell, like, I've had this conversation with people where it's like when you're kind of peeking for a show, you almost want to stay away from the mirror as much as possible because you'll start to like. Am I ready? Am I am I lean enough? There's like, a spectrum. Am where I holding it stops, water? Stops to help. Stop helping you. Yeah, it's almost point. becoming. It's almost raising. Well, any obsession, raising stress. If you yeah. obsessed about any one thing, you would that would not be good. Yeah, and like one of the things we're trying to do in, in a peak week is lower cortisol to as low as possible, mm -hmm. and stressing, getting in your head about how you look is a great way to raise cortisol, which is actually going to make you look worse because cortisol holds water, and that's what we're trying to do is eliminate as much water as possible. So. Dude, that's crazy, man. I, I love going through all of these. Like, there's just so many. There's the just processes. So much to it, dude. There's yeah. so much in. I think peak week is like, and uh, some people have a problem with peak week. Some people call it hell week, whatever you want to call it. The last seven days of a prep. There's a lot of manipulation we're doing. Like one thing, water specifically. Like mm -hmm. why I think I was able to get very dry for this most recent show is I. I messed around a little bit with water and, and sodium. And what's your uh, Instagram for Brandon? Uh, it's. I think Jack underscore Singleton 98. Yeah, that should be it. Um, okay, cool. Thanks. Cool. Man. Yeah, and I, uh, so f one of the things that I did was water loading. So you take in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I took in about two gallons or 
about eight liters of water mm-hmm. each of those days. So you and it's hard to sleep because you're just peeing constantly throughout the night. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah and what lot. you're doing is you're telling your body you have so much water that you're one of the things in the body is anti diuretic hormone or uh, and it, it, what anti diuretic hormone does is it tells your body to uh, hold water. And what we're trying to do by having a lot of water is to reduce the amount of anti-diuretic hormone that we have so that our body is flushing it. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay, you're hydrated. We don't need to hold on to water. Keep flushing, keep flushing. Um, so you load that water through Thursday. Mm-hmm. Then Friday, I pulled down to two and a half liters. So a little bit over half a gallon of water. So we're going from two gallons to half a gallon, mm-hmm. which is a big reduction in water. But since we've been loading and telling our body we have enough water, we're going to keep peeing even though we're only drinking, you know, half a gallon. So I drank those two and a half liters before 6 p.m. on Friday. And then I weighed in on Saturday morning right before the show at 8 a.m. And I cut my water off at 6 p.m. Friday and then just sips throughout the night. And then the morning weighed in 186 Um, And part of the reason you're dropping water is to make weight, but also to get as much water out of the skin as possible. Mm. Um, So that's one thing I did to just get as physically dry as possible, no water in the skin. The other thing is sodium loading, which some people don't do because manipulating sodium can cause a lot of water retention. But what I did was high sodium, kind of the same process, high sodium, and then Friday reduced sodium so that my body is not holding that much water, just trying to flush everything out because what sodium does is it holds water. So, is there anything that you do that, like, is like, I want to say controversial, but like most people don't do, or anything that you've experienced where you're like, I do this and most people yeah. don't do it? But I think it's just not doing the ex- extreme. I think one of the things with my body that a lot of people don't do is I have to heavy carb load, like, I'll deplete. For this prep, I, I did like two days of 100 gr- Some people will do no carbs mm-hmm. further. To, so you deplete and then you refeed because you want to mm-hmm. get as flat as possible and then fill the muscle out with carbs. So what what takes, I take, a, for some reason, I burn through a lot of carbs. I need to take in a lot of carbs. So I did 100 grams on my low days, which was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I probably, between Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday, took in about 2,000 to like 2,500 grams of carbs which is a lot like for most people they would end up spilled over which is where you have so much carbs that the water goes from your muscle into your skin so you look watery Mm. for me how did you know how much just experience yeah and like i one of the things i think people good coaches will have you do and what you should do is you should experiment with your carb loading during your your prep process so like two weeks out i practiced and i took in like two thousand grams of carbs over the course of two days, I tried things like fat loading where you're like increasing your fats by a lot right before you intake the carbs. And there's kind of some theories that you have intramuscular triglycerides, triglycerides is a fancy word for fat. So you have intramuscular fat. So you take, you fill your fat stores and then you fill the carb stores and you just have this really full muscle. Mm. I don't know how much, there's not a lot of science behind that, but it's something that's anecdotal. I didn't really notice it. I always notice I'm very carb sensitive over fat sensitive so even when i did the fat load into the carb load which i practiced at two weeks out i didn't really notice a big difference compared to not doing a fat load Mm. um but yeah like most people they would be very spilled over at two thousand grams of carbs and like i would kind of get in my head like should i be eating Mm. this many carbs but i still came in what did you eat for the carbs for carbs so i kept it all pretty much clean i do like cream or ice right a lot of rice cakes like i probably went through like four bags of rice cakes over those days yeah um caramel rice cakes when i am not doing a lot of sodium and then i would do white cheddar rice cakes because they have a lot more sodium um cream rice rice cakes potatoes so i would do sweet potatoes all of prep but then i switched to russet potatoes because i actually noticed i was getting more bloating from the sweet potatoes that, probably because the higher makes sense yeah, yeah the yeah. higher fiber content yeah. um and that was really it. It was, wasn't was anything crazy. I wasn't doing, like, a ton of French fries or a ton of candy bars. Like, yeah. Is that not your thing, though? I, I've done that approach in the past where I've done, like, a lot of sugar because I've had to do more, like, carb loads within a shorter period of time where I'm, like, loading carbs within 24 hours, which is not the ideal way to do it because in my past shows, I've had a little bit more distension in my stomach, mm-hmm. especially when you're posing, doing a lot of posing, which they oh, had yeah. us do for this show. 
um, this most recent one, you want to keep your stomach as tight as possible. So I noticed those drier carbs and doing it over two and a half, three days helped me keep my digestion in check. And that's a big reason why you're doing the same foods, you're practicing with the same foods the entire prep is because when you get on stage, you want digestion to be as optimal as possible. Getting up there, having a flat stomach, you know, you're using the bathroom frequently, yeah. you're not having any issues with going to the bathroom. If you're, if you're, you know, all that is good, you're ready to step on stage. Like everything's going well. Cause there's, you know, I've, I've had instances where you'll have trouble going to the bathroom or because you've all of a sudden tried to introduce like new foods the day before the show that you haven't eaten in the past. So the best thing is to keep things consistent and to also yeah, use things you've practiced with. Like rice cakes, like that's coming out. Yeah, you know, it's, that's it's, going it's in, burning that's quickly. Yeah. And like one of the things you do to, I've uh, for fat sources, like I do rice cakes with peanut butter because peanut butter is going to slow down that absorption of the rice cake. But it's also something I use the entire prep, so I knew it was going to digest I well. I liked peanut butter more. I, I love peanut butter. Yeah, like you, you're set. You're fucking pretty. But I don't not like it. Yeah. I just don't really like it. Some like people it in quantities like, like that. Uh, I could put it on a bagel. Or, yeah. But that's it. Some people like, uh, what's it called? Uh, the other kinds of nut butters, like a. Uh, well, av- like uh, I just couldn't be fucking saying nut butters. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. Like I would just laugh. Or avocado. A lot of people do avocado. Um, but there was that. So what's the um? What's that vegan documentary? Was it stronger, fat, better, faster? Oh uh, well, or, no, I know no, there's no, the one on Netflix one, where they like argued that meat is so bad. For uh, game blood. changers. Game it's changers. Called. That's what it was. Yeah. So he was like, because Joe did this one time, and he was like, he was like, yeah, they uh, they said that, um, it was like, uh. A steak. Mm-hmm. I'm probably fucking this up. Or and then so one side was like a steak, and the protein content, yeah. everything, and the other one was like how much you would have to eat to with, get those same protein with peanut butter or whatever. And mm-hmm. it was like the but the peanut butter was inches. It would have been slabs on slabs yeah, of it's peanut a butter. Lot. They're trying to make it out like, and that's just one thing. Like the vegan people, they got fucking. They got a lot of good shit. They got a lot of iffy shit. It's a little bit of everything yeah. for each side, but yeah, I just it's like they're always like, but yeah, but you could just eat peanut butter. It's like, yeah, dude, I'm eating half the fucking yeah, tin of yeah. peanut butter. And especially, I've 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 gotten people who are vegans or or vegetable based eaters who will be like, well, well, can't you just eat your protein amount? Like, if I'm in an off season, I'm trying to get like 300 grams of protein, and do you know it's so hard to get 300 grams of protein through lentils and peanut butter and like tofu. I hate tofu to begin with, just the taste of it, but. It's 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 kind of very un unreasonable or, or uh, it's just ridiculous. Diff- yeah, it's yeah. kind of ridiculous. Definitely difficult. Some people do it. Like there are vegan based bodybuilders out there. But well, dude, my fucking friend Sean is fucking. Yeah, yeah, fucking he's on. He's been on this, right? Yeah. Yeah, man, he could compete. He, yeah, dude, if if you were like his coach, it would mm-hmm. be fucking. He would just probably win. It's, I. It's hard with like. I think it'd be a challenge to do a vegan or veg. Well, vegetable base is a little easier, I, but even with him, I just not it's like I, eggs. Yeah, like if you're a vegetarian, yeah. or can vegetarians have eggs? I think they can, right? And I just can't. They can, right? I can't yeah, survive without them. Yeah, because like, and I like Dude, that. This I, is, I this is do, the thing. But. Okay, I got chickens, and they're little baby chickens, right? And I raised them mm-hmm. until they were bigger. Yeah, they make eggs. Okay, do you? Do you, I don't know if anybody knows this because I have chickens. When they lay the egg, fucking nothing happens. Yeah, the egg is just there. Yeah, it's uh, not all of them. Like they're not going to turn into chicks. Like they literally yeah. sit on twelve. They'll sit on. They'll they'll literally be. They don't care. There's, the chickens don't. They're not like guarding. Yeah. Like they now and I've, we've trained them to do. Like once you do it enough, they mm-hmm. probably get it. But they're not like fighting me for the egg and they like the egg is just gonna sit there yeah. there's just nothing happens. it's a waste if it's if it's gonna that's get, what i'm saying they're yeah. not all gonna be fucking chickens you know yeah. what i'm saying but well if you don't have a rooster they're not gonna be yeah. they're just eggs so what are you supposed to do with them i don't understand that like uh, yeah. like what's <laughs> the chicken doesn't do anything with the egg yeah they don't care they don't give a shit about no it. Yeah, they yeah. sometimes they crack the eggs sometimes yeah. they fuck with the eggs or they don't even care dude yeah it's uh, their I, brains it's, are so tiny they're not like the argument i've never i think it's like if you really do care about environment or whatever okay go ahead but like mm-hmm. you know how many tofu plants are you destroy if you if you dive into the whole mm-hmm. hurting animals argument yeah, you yeah. can go into anything of how 
you know, these whatever vegetable farms are killing however many rodents. Yeah, and but dude, it's, you're trying to save. A there's chi- no reasoning. Dude, to you're it. trying to save a chicken that you don't know. Yeah, it's. But a fucking slave made this phone. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, <laughs> oh, electric car, chicken? electric cars are good on the phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the phone, you're using it to type about no. fucking some other shit. So it's, yeah, but dude, it's pick a battle. It's it, it's you, pick a battle. You like Which can't battle did you dive choose? too far into it because nope. you end up you can't reason yeah, but, with but, with certain the, people. The proof the proof is that there's no one person that fights for everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if there's not enough time in the day, then you are choosing the battle that yeah. you want. So if you're choosing, if you're now prioritizing a chicken over a person in this example, yeah. then what are we? Then what are we yelling at each other for? If yeah. if I choose. Yeah, eating disorders point, and you point. choose chickens and the other person chooses fo- slaves who make phones like we can all fight yeah, we can all exactly. fight a battle and we don't I, have to compete I don't get battles. how people have like some people just have too much time on their hands I but think, that's what I'm that's where I'm to at, like bro. really get heated about the well, little here's the deal. you want to break world. it down this is really the real this is the real dude people come home and they want to do when they get home mm-hmm. after work they start doing what they want to do yeah I don't live like that mm-hmm. I just do I create you have your consistency I think yeah some of us are we have our consistent lifestyles but um, what I'm saying that. is in in the time in the 8 to 12 hour period of the day they're doing shit they don't want to do yeah that's so that is true yeah if they they you could if you were so fucking vegan they gotta go get, get out on the front lines like, yeah they gotta go get passionate about I'm it I'm so somehow, passionate yeah. about podcasting that I can't not I do it all day yeah, it's like yeah exactly if yeah. you're if really it's like you're just not doing what you really want to do like you should be on the front lines of the thing it like, gives them some sense of purpose by having an internet argument over a topic that they feel so passionate about and that's about. their purpose and yeah. not in their whatever job yeah, exactly and like yeah. my cousin is like a social worker right like she's amazing like she got a degree and I don't know all the details, but like mm-hmm. she actually does it. She doesn't like just do it for a couple hours to on get a the Sunday. money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I don't volunteer for two hours and be like, I'm a volunteer. Fucking I'm a like, yeah, I, I you. So yeah, man, it's like, and then they tie their whole identity to it, which is definitely not good. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> like, uh, that should be your, like you said, that should be your job. If that's what you're going to be so, be, so passionate hey, be about. Be a lobbyist. Yeah. Exactly. You get to be political all fucking day. <laughs> uh, I, there's jobs for this. Yeah, they're, yeah exactly. <laughs> there's if you care jobs, so much, go be a congressman. Or dude, a literally, there's jobs that require outrage. There's mm-hmm. jobs you can do. They should, they should. More of them should do podcasts. Yeah, yeah. And not to get into too deep in political. There's a guy on TikTok who's actually a congressman. He he was, he's very new and he tries to be like very transparent about you know topics in politics. And he made a video. I just saw it today where he's like, you should see the amount of people that in the closed door discussions they're very civil and calm and and like you know logical and then once they get into the open room discussion where there's cameras and the news is there to to film it that's when they put on these personalities of like hysterics and yelling and shouting and it's it's just hilarious like they're just doing it to 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 you know satisfy their their party or or what they what they need for clicks and money yeah. and lobbying it's ridiculous dude no it just blows my mind and yeah if i wanted to keep going on this they're gonna pat they're gonna the fucking abortion things in, oh yeah in, we in could go house. and go and go in the, it's in the house on wednesday this is gonna come out on monday after after the okay. wednesday that that whatever that decision gets made on the pill they make a decision oh yeah 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 so that's gonna be made this week but if yeah they're man. banning it or not right yeah dude and yeah. i'm like i'm so like i truly like i don't lie to you when i tell you like i am not a side because I only care, like I only know this about the pill because it's an issue that I news. I that I like to like that I care about. Yeah. Like I don't watch the news. Like mm-hmm. I only know issues. Yeah. So yeah. like I truly like I know people say oh, I don't have a side, but kinda then they watch Fox. It's yeah. like dude, you kind of have a fucking. You're biasing side. yourself. Yeah. Like I you literally don't even subscribe to mm-hmm. a political channel yeah. or a political person. You know, like I don't, I don't even like I try not to. Yeah. Do that, I like know? getting my news from. Uh, British Broadcasting BBC, oh, BBC cause, yeah because yeah. they're right. like it's like someone who isn't American looking at America it's like that's gotta be like the least bias possible right but you know there's still gonna be some bias somehow yeah and there's all those guys like your Ricky Gervais or your yeah. fucking Jim Jeffries like they always have the best take on yeah America, and you just you, know? you just gotta take everything with, with a grain of salt at the end of the day and um, not yeah. get so passionate like and it ties into what you said like don't we have our things that me, me and you care so much about that we put so much of our energy and we don't have the time to like 
go off about politics or really care that much about it. It's like, oh, that's what's going on in the news today. And then back to life where I actually care about, you know, bodybuilding and, and my professional job as uh, in pharmaceuticals. Like, yes. that's, that's what I care about. That's what I'm going to be thinking about. You know, yeah, well, people don't have that, yes. like you just said. So it's not, yeah, it's not even like recre. I don't, I'm not even, I'm, if you do recreational outreach or recreational outrage, mm-hmm. th- that's almost okay. Just don't be half assed about it. Yeah. Like, if you're yeah. going to be outraged, be fucking out. Don't be <laughs> outraged for like five Commit minutes. Commit to it. Yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, dude, I say the same. Dude, I literally, like, I'm on podcast every day. Like, I say the same shit yeah. all the time. Like, if there's something, I also change my mind a lot, mm. but there's also things that I truly believe in. I just fucking, I know my job is to say it over and over again. Yeah. I'm going to reach somebody different next time yeah exactly but that's a fucking rabbit hole for sure yeah. but i'm glad we touched <laughs> politics on it yeah yeah i feel like we do every time which is funny we have to man it's like part of the it's part of that it's people that that are not um it's fucking hard dude it's hard to do all this stuff yeah like, it's hard yeah. to be in shape it's hard to like luckily we got ones that are pretty productive like yours is physically productive mine's like mm-hmm. mentally productive you know but it's it, part of yeah. the balance of of life is it's not just you know you have your passions you have your hobbies you have your professional life and then there's what your 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 values too um and i think that is part of you know a, a person is the things that they value and it does tie sometimes does tie into their passions and stuff like that so i think most people don't know i yeah. think most people have no idea I'm not saying that i do mm-hmm. i have a pretty good plan because i have people to help me but most people have no idea what they want at all yeah so it's hard to get anywhere if you don't know where you want to go. Yeah. And I, and I always, I mean, that's a good point. Like, cause I seem to notice I care more about outside things when I don't have a goal lined up that I'm looking for. Whereas like mm-hmm. now that I have a goal of becoming a pro bodybuilder, it's like, yep. I could care less what's going on outside of that. Yeah. Especially when I'm on a prep, it's like, when I have that 16 weeks devoted to this specific day that I have to look my best, it's like yeah, nothing else matters. It. Like I could give a, a shit what, it, what yeah. else is going on. If it doesn't have to do with the, the show, I, I don't really want to talk about it. And especially as it gets closer, you become more and more, uh, more and more serious about it. More, not even serious, but you just become more locked in to uh, yeah. every, every detail that goes into bringing your best for that specific day and, and bodybuilding and in, in competing is interesting because you have the one specific day that's planned out on the schedule that you're planning every single day to look best on that that day at that time specifically so i i did a uh i had a show local show um where i performed and you know brandon was there and shit it was really yeah. cool man sold tickets like it was a lot of fun god had a 20 minute set Dope. Every day for like two hours a day, I fucking dialed that set in, dialed that mm-hmm. set in, dialed that set in every day. And uh, I realized that like now that I don't after the show, I'm like, oh, I could chill for a sec. Yeah. No, I can't. It's a weird <laughs> it's a weird feeling after an event like that. I almost and like, it went, almost like right it, now. It's like yours. Like, dude, it went really well. Yeah. Like everybody yeah. loved it. Yeah. I was taking a picture with fans. Like it's that whole thing. And then it's like, okay, what's next? Yeah, because you're like you and uh I really love Goggins for that, man, because he's so against, like so against the like giving yourself that break. Yeah. And I get it because dude, one day off turns into three and then mm-hmm. you know, like now I'm back to my habit before, which is just like, yeah, like in the morning a little bit and like a few hours a week instead yeah. of like ten dedicated hours a mm-hmm. week. So yeah, man, I feel it too, man. A hundred percent. Like I like it change I so that's why I think I need like with your you giving me that fitness plan, like yeah. I need to have these micro goals for these things, like these smaller mm-hmm. things to work up to. Like okay i need to literally set myself on an album and be like you're making an album yeah so now i know where this what like now i know the bigger picture where the song fits so i'm going to be more motivated to finish because i set a timeline like yeah. that show is that day yeah. like you can't change the day it's happening yeah exactly. Yeah. so that's why it's hard doing it yourself though when you can change the day yeah you know? yeah and that and like yeah, that is a good thing that is also true about bodybuilding is like you could be like oh i'm gonna push the show back if you have a coach like they might make the decision to push a show back or whatever but yeah. like and that's different with music because it's like this day is the event no one's changing it you have to be there and you have to show up on that day and that's kind of what the mindset you have to have though when you're doing a competition is like you shouldn't think like oh i have a backup plan like no this is the day you're gonna show up and this is the day you gotta look your best so it's doggy dog too man yeah like it really is like that's why this shit is so good for 
business. Business is bringing out my competitive edge again, like mm-hmm. that I kind of used to have in sports. Yeah, that's that's how I felt with with competing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah it's it's, and I'm not even a comp- like I'm not that competitive. No, I person. I actually like I love everybody, so yeah. like I kind of want to help people. Mm-hmm. But then there's a part of me now that's like, yeah, but it's also like either you win or he wins. So. And you got to assign a price tag to what your contribution to. Yeah, like and that's a hard part with coaching friends. It's like uh, you're taking. I am putting a certain amount of time away like that I could be using to make money and from another person like it's hard to balance that friendship plus business aspect yeah and I'm sure you run into that as well oh man dude I mean I even have even my friend Chaz the other day hit me at the wrong time dude because I, I I don't take time off yeah um I basically I don't take time off like I just kind of go from one job to the next job or one thing to the next and I, when I'm, I'm with my girlfriend I'm off yeah like that's when I'm off yeah but I actually took a week off and I went away and I took a week off and he hit me, you know, halfway During that time. Away, and he go and he's like, Hey, can you send me this stuff? Like, I didn't know it was podcast related just to end up being. And I told him, I was like, dude, this is like my business. Like I can't do it. Like I'm not going to do it. And yeah. then he hit me up again and I was like, dude, I told you like, I'm not doing this shit until I'm back. Yeah. And then Friday I was back, but I wasn't fully back. And I'm like, you know what? No, fuck it. I'm going to do it Monday, dude. Yeah. And I just ended up doing it today because I was actually back at work today. And it's like setting, I have to set those boundaries for me. Yeah. And, or if you're like, you know, and, and it's a mental thing, but also, okay, if you really want me to do this, then I'm going to up the price tag that it's going to cost well, to get also, it done. Also, like, you don't want me to do anything. If you pay less for anything, you get less. Yeah. Like, yeah. just so everybody quality, knows. Like, that's a gr- I, I wish more people would understand that. Like, if you even got a discount on something, like, you're not. I like the. I enjoy like personally. Would I feel better buying something? I don't. I don't feel. I feel good getting a deal. Yeah. I definitely do, but not from like a, a human being. It depends being. what if I'm getting yeah. a deal on a product like I'm, exactly going, what if I'm saying. groceries for example. But if I'm getting something of substance, coaching is a good example. Is there you a go. perfect example. You get it's what like you pay for. if I'm getting a fifty percent discount, am I getting the same quality? If I yeah. paid the full price, probably yeah. not. And me myself as a, it's almost you're you're someone who people pay for your service yeah. like when you get that that the money it almost feels like you have you're obligated to to give them a good product yep. whereas if someone goes and they give you five bucks it's like uh hey, you know they're in, i don't have the same obligation as the person who's paying me well for my service yes. like i'm going to prioritize that person over someone who's just you know doesn't it's almost like your appreciation for your value comes through money, even yes. though we don't say it does, it kind of does. Um, yep. I think that's a good way to describe it. I like it. I like it's either free or it's full price. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I don't, even in my business, right? Like the amount of times I've been asked to discount and I say, I don't discount Yeah. at all unless it's a sale. Yeah. And they say, when's the sale? And I'm like, every single Black Friday I do sale. Mm-hmm. It's the only time of year. Yeah. So if you want to wait, you can wait. Yeah. But, I will give you okay. So your budget's like two thousand. Okay, cool. You want it for fifteen hundred. Okay, I'll give you two options. Yeah. For two thousand, I will add one thing for free. Yeah. For fifteen hundred, I will take away one thing. Yeah. So I can do it for whatever price. I'll do it for ten bucks. Yeah. You're only gonna get my time for then maybe ten minutes. Yeah. It's, right. So the it's value like is to the yeah, mark. like yep. that's how I approach this. Like. It's either you pay more, you get more. You pay less, you get it's less. Only, and that's that's business, and it's it's fair to the customer and to the business owner. That's, but it's funny that people like nobody's negotiating fucking Costco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They that's, love it. They they, yeah. they pay fucking. What's the fucking other one? The fucking fancy one, man. What's the one owned by Amazon? Why am I blanking on this? The grocery store. Yeah. Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah, bro. Whole Foods, they're like jerking off to fucking Whole Foods. Pay seven dollars for like a fancy. Dude, like, you, it's like a pea. Danish, you pay yeah. like a dollar a pea, bro. Yeah. A bag of peas is like nine hundred. It's organic bucks. though. Well, dude, that <laughs> no. makes it all better, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they made up a fake label. Yeah. And yeah. fucking put a little guy with a farm it's on a farm like, in yep, there. There was no pesticides used. There probably wasn't for that one either. That's five bucks, but but we're gonna put it on this one and charge it. That's what I'm saying, yeah. man. People pay these vanity prices, but yep. then they come come to you and then they're like, Yeah, can you do it for half? But it's like, Yeah, you shop at fucking Whole Foods, yeah. dick. <laughs> you got the money. <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. You yeah. just paid fucking nineteen bucks for grapes. And that's a and people you it ties into like what people <laughs> decide to spend their money on like oh, people who spend yeah, starbucks every single day it's like 
Dude, and Imagine I, you put I, that I, money somewhere else. Dude, for real. But I'm also on the other side of the equation, too. I'm on... If you pay six dollars a day in Starbucks, right? Yeah. Fucking six times so say six like six times three sixty five. Yeah, so whatever, twenty five hundred bucks yeah. a year or whatever. If you have that twenty five hundred bucks a year, but you make eighty grand, that's fine. That's a cost of business. Like yeah. if you were if you were twenty percent less productive by mm. not drinking the Starbucks, then I think you can drink it. Right? Yeah, like exactly. it's like, that's a good point. Yeah. So I think it's also this is the problem. The problem is not Starbucks. The problem is people complaining about being broke who buy Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. If you shop at Whole Foods, Starbucks, or Target, you can't p- complain about being broke. Yeah, yep. Because there's there fucking cheaper options Aldi's, out there. Yep. There's fucking Aldi without the S, there's but I still Duncan, like to say, which is probably a couple bucks cheaper. <laughs> dude, I, dude, I love saying like I love how like I don't know if this is just America or it's like we all just add an S to everything. Duncan's. All these, yeah, I don't yeah. know, maybe it's Italian or some <laughs> shit. It's Italian way of just adding it. Walmart's nobody says, but that. it's but I feel like people don't learn. They don't know how to budget, and that's like a big problem. It happened to me, dude. It's a fucking happened to you me because I have a learn business. The hard way. Fucking, yeah, dude. It's like once you lose money, then you're like, oh, okay, now I have to. Once you uh, you know, have some debt, and then you got to figure out how to learn how to budget it. And if you knew beforehand, maybe you wouldn't have been in so much debt. But I think I, I planted the seed with my girlfriend because she has saved so much money. Like she even told me she was like, "I never saved." She's like, "I can't believe I saved this much yeah. money." Nobody knows what they're spending, dude. Yeah, yeah. Nobody a, knows. No, a, they know, but they don't know. And like prior, like I, I do spend. You should just prioritize, like we said, like if you're. You make eighty five thousand dollars and you're getting Starbucks, but it's helping you. That's different. Like same thing with bodybuilding. I'm putting in, however, x amount of money into supplements. I don't feel bad about that because they're helping me in terms of the long run. And that's a, actually ties into people taking steroids. Like how do, how are you a seventeen year old paying for steroids? Like they're not they're not cheap. Um, they're TikTok kids. Yeah, bro. their parents are living in fucking. Their parents have got them hooked up, got them on the card. Yeah, yeah. You know. And it's like uh, you're just using that 20, 40, 50 bucks per week, saving it up to, yeah, dude, to buy they, a cycle. They, they, they took the cash and they bought the little Visa cards. Like yeah, that's how yeah, they do it. yeah. That's actually smart because don't put your fucking credit card on there. Yeah, dude. yeah. But it's 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 like you should – things you're buying, it's okay to spend a little extra – like you said, a little extra money if it's it's yeah, helping you and your goals. You know? It's if you can afford it. If you can afford it. that's a fucking yeah. opinion, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, there's black and white, but – I mean, I know what it's like to make five, eight, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 a month and then spend it all that yeah. month, like, on overhead. Mm-hmm. Like, I know what it's like to run a business with shitty mar- – you know, pretty shitty margins, yeah. you know? Yeah. like. That feel like it's kind of weird because I'm like numb to it now, but like if you, but I don't but know. it's a learning experience too. Yeah, and it's also just which it, most people don't haven't had to do. It's getting so. better at business. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And some people just don't care about it, and that's pr- part of the issue is they don't care until something bad happens. And yeah, when I've spent, dude, I've spent fucking the, like around Christmas, I was giving gap bonuses and stuff like yeah, yeah. It's like five, like three thousand, four or five in a day is. Mm-hmm fucking that's a day yeah <laughs> it's yeah. a tough day it's, but it's a lot of money adds up dude yeah it really fucking does what do you th- think about um because i like i was showing you these vitamins that i take mm. i think uh i had skin problems okay so i had like uh what do they call it when your skin turns a different color like rosacea yeah something yeah, like, like that yeah. kind of and it would you would see it like it would be all like discolored uh whenever sun whenever i started to get something yeah and I started taking those vitamin things. Um, now I'm not gonna not gonna name them because fuck you guys. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you don't I've get been the trying benefit, to get sponsored yeah. for so fucking long. Oh, uh, uh, the ones up. that you got. Yeah, yeah. dude, I kind of blew their fucking spot up completely. But <laughs> fuck them. They're gonna come back. So yeah, d- fucking. I'm never gonna mention them again. You guys, fuck, <laughs> you guys suck, dude. You guys fucking suck. Email me back. and We got a deal. Okay. Yeah. It's still on the table. Uh, it's still on the table. So. So I've been. Ta- I was taking those things. I it could be correlation, dude. Yeah. But it all cleared up. Hmm. And I think it was like I was just either consistent on my vitamins slash I was taking those. Like, do you think there's? Do you think everybody should take just multivitamin? Yes, like, I yeah. So, so everybody's deficient, right? Oh, this is this is this ties into like. Have you seen the whole greens fad? Like people taking greens powder, like that's like, like the athletic greens. It's like type shit? it's like yeah, it's like your da- daily greens or like that's like the new like supplement. A- athletic greens pushing. is the biggest one. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably yeah. I I just it's, it, it's such a 
bullshit. The new, supplement. <laughs> a, the new AG1 by Athletic Greens. If there's there's only one reason to take a green supplement, and it's if you're low on fiber. Uh, and I don't want to get too far from you bringing up vitamins, but I think it, it, it oh, brings up this f- very as good. as far as you want, brother. But greens has become such a highly pushed product, especially among, I think, like, female athletes where they're like oh greens are so good for your digestion it's like well because what's in them it's it's your micronutrients so it's stuff that's derived from fruits and vegetables which if you ate one serving of vegetables you probably would get what you need from that green supplement anyway for not 40 dollars for this like 30 you know 30 serving thing just eat some vegetables but what you're getting mainly is the fiber most people get their micronutrient intake through whole foods that they eat throughout the day even like proteins Mm -hmm. will have the same micronutrients the vitamins that that greens have but the main thing is fiber so if you if you're taking greens and you actually like the benefit of them if you want to save a lot of money just get fiber powder and use the fiber powder at the same time you would normally take your greens and i bet you you will get the same results without spending a ridiculous amount of money on the supplement how many i mean i would say more supplements than not are not are gimmicks yeah or or they're not like at, not everything is yes. doing something not or as it's filler. advertised at least yeah. yeah like there are some genuinely good supplements out there like certain pre-workouts that i think like gorilla mine like i think they're one company that really makes like really effective products you can look at the label they're very transparent about everything they put in that's a good company company that's just pushing out products not proprietary blends those are typically the most skeptical a lot of like supplements are so big now i think a lot of them push fillers to try to make their product cheaper which so more people will buy it and that you know people will lean towards it because it's cheaper but it's not always the most effective because if you're getting supplements and you really do care about performance i'd say spend a couple extra bucks or do a little bit extra research to get something that is transparent and has their full label disclosed like gorilla mine gorilla mine is just yeah. like a good quality com- uh company and that's derek for more plates more dates yep. that's that's his company so oh yeah. yes and he has merrick health as well yeah right? yeah and which is actually becoming an issue with, I don't know if you saw that with... Um, no, put me on, put me on. So the U.S. government is trying to ban telehealth prescribed medicine like TRT. So a lot of people who get TRT prescribed through telehealth. So telehealth is where you never actually have to go to the doctor in person. All you have to do is have, you know, an online consultation. Mm-hmm. And then you can get the prescription written online rather than ever going in and seeing a doctor. The FDA and the U.S. government are trying to push a law, I think that would make it so you can't get prescriptions through telehealth Mm -hmm. like there'd be extra steps to go through it so a lot of people who have trt it'd be a lot harder for them to get it or they'd have to find a new trt clinic that they can drive to in person to get their script which is a big problem because a lot of people get their medicines through telehealth like that's especially with how much less people drive and you know everything's coming online it's it, it is a cause of concern especially for derek because he runs his entire business through telehealth. Yeah. So if you can't do any of your hormonal prescriptions through your online business, you're kind of completely wiped what's, out. What's their argument for that? So I think it's that because TRT has become such a heavily prescri- over-prescribed, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a way to limit the prescriptions. But I've also anecdotally know people who come to me and they've tried to get TRT through their doctor, like their, their doctor they've used for a couple of years. And oftentimes it'll be lots of blood work yep. where it's like oh you're so the healthy levels for testosterone are and i would say th- it's technically 300 through a thousand mm-hmm. like that's the where you should be and there's guys who will come in at 200 and their doctor will be like even 300 is kind of low but they'll come in at 200 and their doctor will be like oh you're like close enough and it's like i feel like garbage like i don't have sex drive like yeah yeah i'm tired all the time not sleeping well a lot of times it's because you have low testosterone those are the type of people who need the trt because it it, it'll change their their quality of life yeah um but a lot of doctors because of it being testosterone and being a steroid technically Mm -hmm. they get very reluctant to prescribe it if they're just a regular doctor Mm -hmm. which is why a lot of people go to these trt clinics because it's just you know and maybe some people are abusing it but it also makes it a lot easier to get so for people who actually need it you know um, and some people they'll try to use like there's a testosterone gel like they'll rub it on their skin and it's supposed to be like transdermal will go through the skin and mm-hmm. then be absorbed but I've talked to multiple people who have tried that and they said it doesn't work at all it's like terrible so they the skin, the, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, like and they've ointment. gotten their, their <laughs> levels checked and it's like it was I think one of my friends from the gym said 
he tried the it was an older dude he's in his like late 40s his his levels were coming in at 150 and he said they even went down when he tried the he used it for like three months and they're like no keep trying it keep trying it and his levels kept going down rather than going up it's so. like he only put testosterone in his forearm or some shit it's like what the f- it's yeah like, this shit and it's just it's not, not gonna it just doesn't work it's not effective for for absorption um so the shots are much better and then he changed to the shot and he's like dude yeah my life is like i'm losing weight now i'm not mm. overweight anymore i'm sleeping better my sleep apnea went away it's mm. like some people genuinely need TRT and making it harder to get is just going to cause a lot more people to have health problems and that kind of sucks. So Yeah, there's and then you have girls on birth control and then that's the whole thing. With, yeah. Like, that's fucking, well, yeah, that's not good. We talked about this on our last um, last mm-hmm. podcast where it's like, any, it's so easy to get estrogen because estrogen and prolactin are in birth control pills, but then testosterone is such a hard thing to get. Like, you have yeah. to go through... So many loopholes. You know, All this so shit's backwards. They're trying to ban. Um, did you see what they're trying to put through with the TikTok ban? It's I I saw the lengthy list of of bullshit that they're trying to ban. Like, oh my god, fucking all, VPNs. Yeah, VPNs where you get like a you get thrown in jail for like three years for using a VPN. Like, dude, this is gonna somebody's gonna hack me tomorrow. I just I've always believed like people if they're gonna use drugs and not hurting anybody, mm-hmm. let them do it. Like, yeah, what what do you? policing it for like i get certain drug addicts certain drugs will lead you to become you know aggressive towards people but like for things that are ho- almost harmless why are we why are we policing them so so heavily yeah it's it's just a personal thing and it, i mean i get it um but i don't get what i don't get is using the same tactics that didn't work yeah that's, a, that's right a, you need yeah. to have some form of rehabilitation which a lot of the process doesn't use <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's you get thrown in jail and you come right back out and then you're going right back to using what you what you did before and it kind of ties into the neuroscience background of, of addiction it's just like you have to break the pattern somehow mm. to fix what's happening or else they're just going to go right back into it so throwing them in jail is probably like one of the worst things that you can do because they're just going to go through withdrawal and then as soon as they're out they're exposed back to the environment that you know, they they get the signals to use, and then they're back to you. Dude, psychedelics have got to be the best thing that they have. Now. Yeah, I mean, it has to be at least promising for the for the large percentage of people that it does work for. Yeah, and I know there's a lot like Canada. I did think did a study with uh, what's the horse tranquilizer? Oh my god, the Joe Rogan one. It was uh, it's the horse tranquilizer drug. I forget what the name of it. It's a such a common drug. Yeah, the one that they busted fucking, they were so. shitting on him for. Because the... Do you know it? It's X-Y-L-A-Z-I-N-E. I know what you... Yeah, oh, it's it's such a common... As we begin with a k- ketamine. Oh, ketamine. Ketamine, that's okay. it. Oh. Yeah, because they were doing... Like, um, like, there were studies done with doing very low doses of ketamine for people who are severely depressed, mm-hmm. like, like multiple suicide attempts. And they found that the ketamine, like, caused a lot of them to just completely lose their depression like change their life around and it's like because when it interacts with a lot of the brain pathways similar Mm -hmm. to because it's a uh, hallucinogenic psychedelic similar to mushrooms and uh cannabis like where you're altering the neural pathway because a lot of times that's what the issue is is like their brain is programmed so heavily into this depression it's like the ruts state. in the road right they just made the ruts so deep that... yeah because what the, what those drugs are doing is they're kind of reprogramming the wiring of your brain like mm-hmm. your brain reinforces itself to fire along the same pathways but when you're using psychedelics it's rewiring that to go on new pathways mm-hmm. which kind of break that that traditional like the traditional signals being sent down which can oftentimes fix the depression that's caused by the reinforced signals and i know the problem with ketamine that i've seen is that it you can overdose on it yeah so it is lethal what, yeah yeah and you can probably overdose on fucking on a Ad- lot Adderall, of I mean. yeah and that's why like why have a therapeutic setting yeah because a lot of the issue with psychedelics and hallucinogenics is it's, that yeah they're classified it's, so it's, it's, heavily all this shit is war on drugs bullshit it's all that fucking, you can't do research yeah on i mean them. even weed was too like even weed was for a newspaper like, still technically is illegal federally yeah which is crazy yeah that is no that thankfully is in the state of new jersey where we are it's completely 100 percent legal dude the shit thankfully. i've gotten is fucking good bro. yeah yeah I mean, it's I some good stuff here in new jersey for real i i'm not a dispensary guy but uh because the prices um but yeah, yeah I, i've i've been and um 
it's fucking good, dude. That was one thing I I, could, I had to stop on prep was was cannabis because yeah. it would just make me so hungry. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's makes, what, maybe it, an edible, not as much. So maybe. I actually tried on a previous prep. I would take uh, like five milligram yeah. edible before bed. A little Eddie. Yeah, and it would it most nights it would put me asleep. But then there was one night where I woke up at three a.m. and I was like, dude, I'm physically starving. Like I'm so did you, hungry. Did you eat? I went down and I ate like, like a, a half a thing cake? of chicken. I half thing of chicken breast. Oh, yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, I know, dude. but I was like, all right, there's something in my stomach. <laughs> I'm stoned, but there's something in my stomach. I can go to sleep. And then I went back to bed, but like it just yeah. makes me like I was craving sugar, like oh dude, the it most fucks bad food possible. Yeah, Yo, the thing is like I mean it's good if, for bulking. It's good for bulking. Yeah. I want to say like I'll get super real. I feel like I would be 15, 20 pounds lighter if I didn't ever smoke weed. Yeah, if I yeah. didn't ever do it, 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 it makes you. I think it allowed hungry. me to. It cha- I think it. This is all anecdotal, probably correlation, but it changed my like profile, my like mm-hmm. like. My taste was probably changed naturally, but like opened me up to way more foods. Yeah, opened me up to eating way more, mm-hmm. which was good for me for my body type. I don't know about like before bodybuilding, where you could you like eat a whole pizza and not gain weight. Or, yes, like, I was yeah, a yeah. very like, skinny kid. That's yeah. that's what I was trying to explain to Brandon. I'm like, because um, he doesn't know you, and I'm like, Jack yeah. is like you were like a no- like a like a normal, however, whatever skinny meso- kid. Yeah, whatever the fuck they call it. It's whatever the skinnier body type was. Yeah, was, that's me. I could literally too. eat like. Yeah. I could eat McDonald's and like I even on bulks like even now I yeah. I think one bulk uh, like two years ago I was eating McDonald's like three or four days a week and the scale was like not moving yeah like, the only way I could get the scale to move was pig out on food like, yeah that's no that, and and like you were because you were helping me right like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I was like, hey, I want to gain this weight in a longer period of time and gain weight over time. And, you know, I did end up gaining weight, but it was just so me going from not thinking about it to thinking about it mm-hmm. allowed me to and just making sure I have at least the three meals plus like a yeah. snack later at night that allowed me to gain like whatever five the five or six pounds yeah. that I did gain. But then on top of that, yeah, I mean, I would have to. I would just have to. It would just be so much. It's uncomfortable for me. Yeah, like I don't hard. like eating extra. When I and like this is another. What I'm my future plans is, I'm gonna take a year. So I was 187, uh, 186 when I weighed in. I can be up to 197 for my weight my weight class mm-hmm. to go pro. I want to be at the top end of that. So I'm gonna take long off season and try to get as heavy as possible to really come in lean. Mm-hmm very lean dry at 197 so what i i i have to eat to the point where it's like uncomfortable like i try to do six meals a day at least 50 grams of protein in every single meal what's the timing on the meals like what's the first two one? or three okay so typically i wake up at like eight or nine a.m try to get up at eight and i'll try to eat like right away in an off season mm-hmm. um and then i try to eat like almost every two hours so it's like eight eleven two five seven nine eleven like literally almost every two or three hours dude i could definitely i could do eight eleven two yeah seven <laughs> and then I, like i would probably i would cap at four yeah well with my around my workout i try to because that's the hardest part is getting the meals in around the workout so i'll yeah. do a meal an hour before i leave for training mm-hmm and then as soon as i get home or i'll bring my meal to the gym and then i'll have it right after that's hardcore it's dude. hard but like if i'm driving they have a microwave there or something they or? do but like i'll i'll eat it yeah or i'll do a, chicken or i'll do a protein right? yeah. sh- like i'll do yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. like rice cakes and like 50 grams of protein in a shake and it's just because the main important thing is hitting my protein goal and then what i try to do is like i'll push the carbs and then i'll push the fats mm-hmm. um but yeah it's just trying to get that every two or three hours because you start to trickle like especially getting them in earlier makes the day a lot easier because then you're not pushing a ton of meals in at night just trying to get all the food in yeah so having that pre-workout and post-workout meal is like timing that does make a big difference into getting all the food in because i'm really taking in like 4500 ish calories a day when i'm bulking mm-hmm. probably a little bit more mm-hmm. um some days a little bit less others but on average i would say probably about 4500 damn so i'm cutting at like 3,000. Well, I started cutting at like 3,500. Then I dropped to like 3,300. The lowest I ever got was like 2,800, mm-hmm. thankfully. Um, and it's it makes it a lot easier when you can have that much food. But a lot of it's coming from protein. Like I'm still doing like 300 grams of protein, 300 grams of carbs, 50 grams of fat. Like that's typically the numbers I was hitting 
for the majority of prep. Dude, and people don't weight. realize it's not easy to eat that much that food. Much food yeah. It was. It's like the only time it becomes easy is at the end of prep when you're starving. Yeah, definitely. And it's most of it is like boring food. Like you're eating a ton of chicken, you're eating a ton yeah. of steak, but. When you're in prep, that food tastes amazing. So, like yeah. anytime you can eat, you're like, "This is delicious." So what? So this was a uh, not national, uh, a regional, regional. Show. Yeah. So what's going on? Like, what's on the horizon here? So I'm gonna look at national. Sh- so I'm qualified for two years. So the rest of 2023 and full of 2024. So qualified for national a national show, show. And, and you've done a national show. I did. I did it for classic. So, oh uh, yeah, I did it for classic classic physique. My weight cap is 182. So now that I'm 186, I'm way above that. So I can't really do classic anymore. So now I'm doing bodybuilding and the feedback I got pushed me towards bodybuilding where they said, that's what my body structure is more fitted for. Can you do like two sentences on the difference? Yeah. So classic physique is there. I would say it's more towards your X frame, like your your V taper. That's okay. what's most important. And that's just body, regardless of size, just body yeah, shape. Yeah, that's really the most important factor. Conditioning and size are going to come in too, but that's what they're looking for the most. Okay. And then bodybuilding is they're looking for kind of as much mass mm-hmm. and freakiness as possible. Like more people who are a little bit more rounder, fuller, like larger muscle bellies, that's more bodybuilding. Whereas that like tighter waist, slimmer, sleeker look. That's what they're looking in classic physique. Okay, so they thought they think you're better for in bodybuilding. And do you yeah. feel that way too? Or? Yeah, and I've always felt like in my best poses, yeah. like there's certain there's you do more poses for bodybuilding, and some of those poses are my better poses, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, and this show that you just did was yeah, bodybuilding. That was bo- my first time doing bodybuilding. Go, yeah. I wanted to ask you this too. Going into that show, did you like think like I don't know? You probably don't go like I'm about to win this motherfucker. Yeah, no, that you, yeah. It's and I've I know people who who go into show and be like. Yeah. It's a, it's a mindset thing. I, I get it's the mind, and I don't. I don't think for me, I like that mindset. Cause yeah. Well, it's also an expectation setting yeah. thing, and expectations can fuck you up. I go in every show. I go in. I'm gonna beat how I showed up last time. Yes. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to yeah. come in better. But than, when you were up, when you're literally up there and like yeah. looking at everybody, like, do you have a thought of like, I kind of know where I'm at? Here. It's once you start posing and yeah. they start moving you around. That's when you. Because I was looking at the guy who came in second to second to me and like mm-hmm. i was like oh this guy like he looks really good yeah, like he, no he did backstage good. i'm like oh you look great and then i get on you get on stage and they start moving you around and mm-hmm. how people who don't know bodybuilding you have like the line of people and as you get closer to the middle you know like the middle is first place and then they kind of do out is how mm-hmm. the placing goes and when they move me to the middle and then i was like the second spot and then they move me into the first spot and then they call you off like basically where you finish is yep. probably where you're you're placing and once i got moved to that first spot i was like all right yeah. <laughs> i think i won and this. everybody else kind of knows yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. it's it's like once you get moved to that spot and then they call you off it's like all right yeah pretty much know at this point yeah. we, we we got this placing um so yeah nice, that, that felt really good. and like i wasn't i knew i was going in at the lighter end of the lighter weight of it mm-hmm um because i was 186 could have been heavier yeah because yeah, yeah, you could have go, gone up to 97 or... and, yeah exactly and i was like okay if i go on the show and i look my best but there's a guy who shows up and he's like at the top end of the weight class like there's nothing i can do about it besides just put on more what muscle. about the guy who came in second how much did he weigh do you so know? I, i'm trying to remember there's no way he it doesn't matter though because it yeah, depends on your body I mean. yeah and there's no way he could have been i don't think he was more than like he had to have been around the same weight as me and like kind of yeah. in that mid 180s range. Mm-hmm. And what about like height wise are these guys like same similar Yeah, they were all too, the, they were all the same. There were the guys were a little bit shorter like for being 5'8 in light heavies, I'm actually kind of at the taller end. And how tall like, 5'9 or something? So there's I'm 5 I'm like like 5'8 and a quarter mm-hmm. is what they heighted me at. Yeah. Um and most of the because it's just weight there's no height is classic that's what okay so you have yes, a height yeah. restriction that for ma- classic because that makes sense with the v yeah you're gonna be a taller and you have guy. a you have a weight you have a weight cap for your height whereas bodybuilding you could be whatever height you can be so there could be mm. you know a little short dude but he Frank weighs Zane. more than me yeah and it's like there's nothing i can do besides put on more mass so i'm says fucking tall i think yeah right? he's, he's like tall. six two so his yeah. weight cap in classic is like i think it's like 240 for him that's probably lean as very very lean it's and very insane. light yeah you can't yeah. go off on that because it'll be another hour. yeah exactly but uh yeah no it's so staying bodybuilding national staying bodybuilding. just so choosing which national show is yeah next year. um i want to make sure i'm going to be close to that top end of the weight cap so 
the first national show is Arnold Amateur. It's usually in March. So maybe I'll do that one. He's um, there. Will Arnold be? He's there? always there. Yeah, Bill, every single you year. You look pretty good, man. He, I think he gives out the the pro cards too, which is cool. <laughs> there you go. You pro. Now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be crazy. Um, Jack, look at me, you pro. Like it's a a role model for everybody for growing up. You know, I mean, he's literally the man. He's like the the he, like the f- the image figure you think of with bodybuilding. He he is, and he's also. He, he didn't fuck anything up. Yeah, he, he's not like a like, bad. Like, he literally was the was the governor, and he, like, didn't destroy it. He's done it. so much. Yeah, and he's like, not even from America, too. He was born in Austria. Was it Austria? Austria. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Came here and was laying bricks. Dude. Yep, yep, which is wild. Um, So there's the Arnold Amateur. Yeah. Then there's... Jay the, Cutler, is that a pro show or no? Is it Jay Cutler's show? Uh, I think that's a regional it's show. A regional yeah, that, yeah, that is coming up, actually, yeah. I think. I think I looked that up. Um. And then, so the other, the main national ones are, yeah, Arnold Universe, which is in June. That's coming up for this year, but I'll, I'll wait till next year to do it. And then, uh, USA is in Vegas, Nationals in Texas, and that's it. Those are the four or five pro nice. shows. Yeah. So I'll pick one of them, see where my weight at. I might do Nationals this year if I'm heavy enough. Um, but it would, that would be a lot to p- try to put on 10 pounds within the next, like, Basically till October. So Ten pounds of legit months. of actual muscle, muscle tissue, yeah, not yeah, just yeah. fat. Because yep. obviously, like I get up to like, I've been up to two thirty. So like you're coming down, <laughs> dude. Two thirty's got to feel fucked. It's heavy. <laughs> Walking around, you're doing like, a pull up on two thirty's probably a yeah. Can you <laughs> yeah. even do a pull up? I probably, probably could. It right? wouldn't be as many as yeah. I could do at like two hundred. <laughs> yeah. Do you um, do pull ups? I'll do weight assisted pull ups because okay. uh, yeah. I'm too fat dude, to dude. Uh, <laughs> to end on this fucking note. Weight assistant pull. You go, you go, dude. Weight assistant pull. This is gonna be a fucking breeze, <laughs> dude. I go. I can do a hundred. They're no, hard. You can't. They're hard as shit. They're, they're almost harder. But they they they're like way better for your back because you can get like the perfect squeeze, dude. Because I back. can't do lat. I was gonna tell you I can't do any lat work because yeah. my fucking shoulder. So uh, yeah. I have. So but that saved me. Yeah. The weight assisted pull up saved my lats yeah. so I could target them. Yeah, and it's like it's it's a. Uh, a lot of times you'll overcompensate with other muscles when you're doing like a regular pull up, whereas mm-hmm. that lat pull down you can like perfectly isolate your lats. So yep. it's that's what body different bodybuilding and a lot of other sports is you're actually trying to isolate, make the movement as hard as possible. Yeah. Um, compared to other sports where you're just trying to move the most mass or whatever. So, dude, it's fucking it's, so cool, man. It's been I a good time, man. Yeah. I love what you're doing. I mean, like we the first podcast we did. You know, you wouldn't have foresaw even like you just we just didn't yeah. know where it was gonna go. Especially know? looking at it now, it's kind of crazy. Like, and just the differences in physique and education, mm-hmm. like, and knowing my body way differently than I did a year and a half, two yeah. years ago, whatever it was. Um, yeah, it's like you're constantly learning new stuff with the sport, which is one of the cool things about it. You there's to, always something to learn. It's evolving a lot. Yeah, you know? there's more and more people doing it. Every show seems to have a bigger and bigger turnout. Yep. more competition and it's good for the sport but you also hope everyone's kind of serious about it that's what you want for the sport yeah not just I mean, people doing it to do it you know and, and that's a good thing though about the competition though is that uh, however you want to look on ig that's cool but yeah. it doesn't fucking matter dude. yeah there's guys who will post a bunch of pictures edited filtered yep and then they show up on stage and eh, something's off here they're not what i look what you look like on instagram there's that one kid that we were talking about did you that, you sent me that got posted like that. on you know goob he he like roasts he called yeah, out people yeah, who are yeah. fake on social oh, media. Oh, I DM'd one of the guys who got called out on Goob. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was like, I'll get you on. Like, oh, you yeah, that was the guy we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there's an instance like that where, you know, you post these crazy pictures that get hundreds and hundreds of likes. Yep. And then you show up stage and you get eighth, like, <laughs> like <laughs> exactly at a regional yeah. show. Like, it's not. What are, what are you doing? Yeah. And yeah. that looks so bad on you as like an athlete. Dude, just for the gram is the worst. It's like anything for that. And like people on social media, they won't care that you placed, you know, whatever. But people who love bodybuilding or into the competitive sport, like yeah. it just gives you such a bad image because it's like where are your prior if you're doing this for what reason it's respect dude like what yeah. are your prior like okay you want to be a social media person mm-hmm. focus on social media don't don't exactly. try to be a bodybuilder if that's not what you want to do you and know i don't knock a guy who's fucking like say like me right like mm-hmm. compared to the average person i look pretty good because i've been you stay doing in it shape. For, i stay yeah. in shape like and i was doing real bodybuilding shit mm-hmm. at one time i could go on and fucking just change my whole shit and be like you can eat a pizza and i'm running yeah. ads 
I could maybe be a fitness fucking a, a mediocre fitness trainer, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of these guys. They're, yeah, that's it's what like it is. they just have a one of our physiques, and they worked out a little bit for five six I'm like, years. I could do that exactly. Yeah. And then they go sell a plan. Or that's a course, what it is. Know? So it's like, yeah, you, it's all about like it's the real man. Like you could tell, you could just tell if it's real or not. Authent- yeah, there's a certain level of authentic- authenticity to it. Yeah, and like I've seen, like you can tell who in the gym. One thing I you always notice about bodybuilders is like the guys who wear. I mean, I'm wearing a tight shirt right now, but like you mm-hmm. see the people when I'm in the gym, I'll wear like a two XL and like yeah, yeah, try yeah. to be like covered up. And like most of the biggest bodybuilders who are in there are the ones who like are wearing the oversized stuff, kind of like not being seen. And then they take their shirt off, and you're like, oh, oh okay, that's the bodybuilder. Yeah, bro, you're in that locker room afterwards. Yeah, you're like, holy shit. Or the TikTok kids will be like posting in the mirror, like you know trying to think oh the high school kids yeah, yeah it's, so it's, funny, it's the it's a, <laughs> like dude as if bro like as if yeah i was... get it's it's cool that they're into it but like just just have some gym et- etiquette you know what i you know what i mean yeah for real that's that's the that's the worst it's yeah, one I, just, i'm like, glad i don't way. go to a gym dude I'm, yeah yeah I, I mean i'm going to it's just like i know that i need to, i need to for i just need everything yeah like, i need all the machines and everything and there's a, just, there's just those little things i mean it's fine like you deal with mm-hmm. it but it's just like do people come up to you that don't know you ever or yeah like, i get a, a good if i'm like especially on prep like and it's hard because I, tr- I we talked about on the very first episode of prep it's like people come up to you and they're really interested in what you're doing but you're so tired you don't want to oh, that like, clip did good yeah yeah you don't want yeah <laughs> you don't want to like blow them off but like because they care but you're mm-hmm. also so tired but yeah there's a lot but of they people. observe you like they know yeah like, they look and they're like and okay I, this guy's doing something like, i can tell yeah and they'll be like oh like are you prepping for a show or something like yeah mm-hmm. i'm doing this but they show, also so see whatever. you doing 460 sets and they're, they're <laughs> like maybe this guy's doing <laughs> dripping fucking sweat exactly this guy's going a little harder than me yeah you know? like that's Get and those eye, a lot of people are just on their, on their phones like that's you can kind of tell who's not. Dude, I fucking who's there just to be there. Past the motherfucker on his phone. Like the only thing I'm doing is on my phone is just to track by the weight. I yeah, do. Like, yeah. Or like, I'm switching songs or something. Exactly. Like, but I don't do this like nine minute rest on my no. phone. Like, dude, I we'll don't go through Instagram. That. We'll go through Snapchat. Dude, let's leave it on that, dude. If you're if it's if yep. it's uh, not an off day, don't take a fucking off day. Yeah. And get the fuck off your phone, dude. <laughs> get to, get to work. You're there for a reason. Exactly. So. Why well, might as well go home and sit on the couch. Yeah, you, know? you could like, do it there. Don't take my equipment that I'm trying to use. Exactly, dude. This guy's doing it for real yeah. dude thanks for coming back jack appreciate it man this has been a yep. lot of fun thank you for having the me man as anytime always. dude i'm excited to see um just fucking how this keeps going man i mean yeah. i, I want to get out to one it just didn't work out day wise time wise yeah. this time but when i have like if it's not a thing i already have dude i'm just gonna block I, I i even marked this day since fucking last time <laughs> since you told me about it so whenever the next one is tell me uh let me know man i'll put it up on ig too um this will be out on monday so, so cool come very out right soon away. awesome you know how i am clips take time but uh that's yeah. that's just my process for now but we're coming we're awesome. uh we're cooking man podcast is gonna continue and yeah if you have any guests for us let me know brother yeah i'll keep you it. updated yeah thanks bro awesome thank you dude brother b we got Brando in here today, killing it. You gotta get on cam, bro. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, thanks, B. Awesome. Yeah, man. I told you he was crazy, bro. <laughs> I'm doing push-ups after this. That's we could probably keep good. going, but we won't. <laughs> He's good. His, his, I like his methods. Push-ups. Yeah. Just just for your daily push-ups. I'm, I do nothing but push-ups, like 300 a day. But that's, that's so, cool. Yeah, that but works for, like, uh, for real. For, no, it, it it'll keep work. you in shape. If you yeah. could stay consistent with it, it'll it's keep you in shape. It's not the fucking things you do. It's literally the consistency. Yeah, that's all that that's really all that matters yeah dude. you don't have to take anything to the extreme unless it's what you're super passionate about yeah like there's so much you know fitness you can be healthy you can be in shape it's not that hard you just got to stick to it yeah like go off the beaten path and become inconsistent like that's really what we got to do a poll maybe i'll get you and sean on next time because i still do oh do yeah that. we gotta do and that we'll just have a th- conversation yeah he's yeah. down so yeah i'm down too all right well stay tuned for the next one um we're gonna have a vegan bodybuilder versus non <laughs> <laughs> go at it throw down. um you guys know the deal man um make sure you watch the video version on youtube if you are in the audio but i appreciate you there too um yeah man appreciate you turning in to another episode of bobcast and before we go you guys know the deal i'll say it every time i'll say it again we're on every single platform even the ones nobody uses. All right, Jack. Catch you, buddy. Yep. Thanks, man. Peace.